Salutations ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel Maniacal Miniatures. In this video by popular request, I'm doing a showcase of everything I've painted so far that I haven't sold off or otherwise given away. So stick around for that. So here we are guys, uh, welcome to my little showcase of everything I've painted. I know I've showed you some of these uh, minis before, especially the, uh, the iron jaws here. But I felt like that previous video was not the best quality that it could have been. So here I'm gonna try and show as best I can all these different minis I've painted. Uh, I'm gonna show you both the Iron Jaws army, uh, the painted bits, and some terrain, and uh, some animals I've painted. If you want to see more than what you can actually gain from seeing this video, you can always check out my Instagram or my Imker profile, uh, both of which are linked on my channel's cover banner. So, yeah. That's this guy, Bert the Gargan. Next. Fire Vortex. I'm just going to quickly show this because I actually show it a lot in the video I've made on how I painted this. That's a long video but I do a step by step tutorial on how to get this exact result. I'm not entirely finished with this. Uh, I have to revisit these little markings down here to bring out the same symbols that I have on my realm gates. As you can see, that has the same green logo on there. That's because that's the symbol for the Rail of Life, which is a nice segue into talking about this thing. A Realm Gate. A Realm Gate of Life to be exact. I'm really happy with this uh, sandstone color. Uh, if you want a tutorial on how to build uh, or rather paint this in uh, specific, specific uh, sandstone, you can check out my tutorial on the Balefire Vortex, because I do that exact uh, procedure on, in that video. So, it's uh, nice and fast and simple. It looks really natural and, uh, dare I say, professional, but uh, it's really simple to do. Uh, I believe everyone, uh, anyone and everyone can do it. So, um, yeah, I put a lot of extra tufts on this one because I want it to seem like uh, life is spilling forth from the gate. Like, tall tufts down there yeah really. and we have the realm gate of death the realm gate of Shaish, where the other one uh, was Giran this is death so I deliberately put some uh, dead grass on there because uh, dead <laughs> and uh, painted it purple because that's the color of Shaish. the wind of death is purple and incidentally my favorite color as you might have gleaned from my uh, Iron Jaws Army, this is my second favorite color, orange, which is uh, the Amber Realm of Beasts. So, yeah, there's not much difference to them other than um, the, the fire, the magical fire, as well as the, the symbols at the top, as well as uh, how many and what kind of tufts I put on them. And the Realm Gate of Heavens which is Asir, which is Sigma's realm. An A for Asir. Not to be confused with the computer brand. <laughs> that dad humor there. Even though I ain't a dad. So we're gonna go on to the animals now. These are some of the NPC miniatures I've made. These are for, from Wargames Foundry. I looked up uh, how uh, Iron Age pigs looked on the on, with some mad Google foo, and then I just painted it to look like that picture, and uh, spent a few few hours on painting all these, not just that little base, but uh, I have a few, I have some some warthogs there as well. I looked up on the internet, let's just do it one at a time and say, can you see this? I hope you can. Yeah. 
eventually I would like to get a camera that has uh, better focus than, uh, than the GoPro does. But that's for another time. So, yeah. Well, this little picket went to market. So. Yeah. I love these tufts with the little flowers on them. Looks very nice and natural. Yeah, I hope you like those. I'm pretty happy with them. Oh, there's some little piglets here as well. Just a little trio walking around in a circle. <laughs> I thought they were really cute. And just to do a size comparison to a Megaboss, you can see just how small they are here, I believe. That's a tiny little piglet. It's not more, much more than a, than a mouthful. So that's also really small to paint. Gotta admit, it's not the largest miniatures I ever painted. And that these uh, Canadian geese with the blue feet, white bellies, and white cheeks. These were primarily made with uh, with shading. Actually, I just gave them uh, varying uh, coats and layers of shade. So I just put more layers on the bottom than I did at the top. Quite simple. The most time it took with those was actually the drying process because there were so many coats and you need to let them dry between each coat. So, yeah, here we have two male geese which are fighting possibly for ter ter territory or perhaps females. I thought these were, all these animals were nice and, and cinematic. Give some nice ambience to my games, just placing them around the forest, some nooks and crannies, some badgers. I'm really happy with these. We have these exact badgers in Denmark, so they look very cute, I think. I hope I can get this to, to sharpen up, because as you can see, it's smaller than this guy's boot. So it's quite hard to get the camera to pick up all the nice little details in the fur. But these are actually quite quite good miniatures for, for the price. And again, I believe they're from War, uh, War Games Foundry. This little mutt. Again, just look them up on, um, on the internet. And actually just paint it to that picture. So you have how does that look, and on which colors, uh, on which parts of the body are it? Uh, is it which colors, and, and then I just, yeah, would like that. And a fun little thing I did. I did these uh, these uh, vines from uh, from Fenro. These are made in resin, and uh, they actually fit surprisingly nice in with my Angel's army. That wasn't even on purpose. But uh, of course, vines are green and purple, as are my orcs. I should probably call them the grapes. <laughs> the grape orcs. Uh, but these were very fast to paint. I just gave them a uh, tan green over a white. Uh, I primed them, them white. Then I gave them an Acrax Earth shade on the base, a tan green on the leaves, and a uh, Chi Violet. Yeah, Druchi Violet on the the berries, uh, the grapes. So, uh, so these took 10 minutes tops to do all of these, five perhaps. They were very fast to paint and they look great for, for the purpose they serve on the, on the table. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with those. I'd like to get some more, but in regards to what you get for the price, they're a bit pricey, I think. Would love to get twice the amount I have, perhaps even more. Always make some vines. Hmm. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see me uh, make some, some grape vines and how I would go about that. Well, here we have here we have my Vietnam shaman, and I actually have two of these. I've shown these before. I've shown them on Instagram and Inger as well. And um, yeah, I, I took them quite different uh, paths. One I kept pretty uh, basic on the staff. The other, I took his uh, his horns from his head and uh, put them on, on the staff instead. 
I uh, therefore removed them from the hood. And just gave him a, a regular hood. I hope that's showing nicely that they're very different. This guy has a little vomit <laughs> in the sides of his mouth. That's pretty gross, I know. But uh, one of uh, his abilities I call green puke. So I thought, well, hawks are not the greatest uh, mouth wipers in history. So perhaps he just left some there. Uh, I removed this guy's necklace to give them a bit of uh, a different look. And uh, I gave them uh, alternating daggers. So they're a bit different. So they wouldn't look exactly the same, but they would still invoke um, the same easy, recognizable... It's very easy to see from the top down that these are weird enough shamans. That might be due to the smoke, but um, yeah, I like the pose of them and I like... Uh, <clears throat> I like to be uh, still being able to see that these are gaming pieces, so I don't want them to be totally unique and um, and different from each other because I want to be able to recognize them fast on the table. I think that's uh, the main purpose of Warhammer is, is to play it, in my uh, opinion. So I need them to be fast recognizable. This is the guy I painted the last, and I'm most happy about his uh, magic smoke here. I did wet blending on that, um, and that was uh, quite uh, quite easy, I might say, and uh, gave a much better result. I tried to go for some almost thunder, magic thunder-like effect in the guy on the right, um, and just this billowing smoke on the guy on the left. I don't know if that shows at all, but that was what I was hoping for. Otherwise, I gave the, the guy on the left some braces, these wrist guards, because they are iron jaws and they're supposed to be armored, and there was another way to differentiate him from this guy. This guy has a bit more Gul'dan feel to him, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm most happy about this guy's uh, skin color. I really like this nice, vibrant, but still kind of sickly green. I might be painting most of my future orcs in this color scheme, which was based around, uh, what's it called? It's called, um, yeah, what's it called, Elysian Green? I believe it's Elysian Green. And then uh, highlighted, I think, with Ogryn cam Camo, something like that. No, the base is the Death World Forest, and then highlighted with the Lauren Forest, and uh, and then Elysian Green, I think. Yeah. Anyways, great guy, fun to paint. I painted them both with uh, blood spatter on their drumsticks. Uh, one I just flicked a little blood on because I wanted the magic effect to shine through. And the other, I felt like uh, he had just gone on a rampage and just bashed someone's brains in. Uh, quite visceral looking, but uh, also very cool. I did uh, green and yellow blending on this guy's drumsticks for magic effect, but on the other guy I did one green and one yellow, and they were supposed to look more like they've been painted than they're actually uh, drumming with energy. So I thought this guy, he are bringing forth the Varg energy, and this guy, he couldn't really bring it forth, so he just kind of bashed someone's heads in for in frustration, <laughs> the little, little narrative going on. Um, the guy on the right, um, was one of the first orcs I painted. Uh, I'm not entirely sure I I'm in love with the, the skin tone. I think it's a bit too Warcraft-ish uh, in the colors. It's a bit, it makes the, the mini look a bit cartoonish, more so than they already do with the purple armor. Whereas I think that the paler orc are better, is better. Um, and I think the pale green goes really well with the armor. I think that looks great. I gave, I gave them different daggers again. This is hardly a dagger, that's a sword. This might more be a dagger, at least for an orc. So that's the difference there, I think. I think that's it. I didn't convert anything else. I made um, the, the bone a little more yellowish on this guy as well, and a bit more gritty and dark on this guy, as if it's been buried for a while and then dug up. And I quite like this one better. I might even repaint some of this guy, just to bring him a bit, bit back down uh, 
and to some more realistic uh, colors. It's a bit hard to save the green now without stripping him entirely, but uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Should I redo this guy? Perhaps just put him away, sell him, and get a new one and paint him more like this guy? Or should I just repaint some of it, like the bone, and perhaps give him a, a bit uh, grittier, not grittier, but a lighter, uh, more natural highlight on the skin or something, uh, an easy fix for this guy? What do you think? Let me know. And you're welcome to let me know which uh, which painting style you prefer. Um, do you prefer the, the paler, grittier, more realistic orcs, or the more cartoonic ones, and why? And here are my mega bosses. Uh, this, uh, they're actually both conversions uh, from the regular mega boss, and I kind of want to get a third mega boss just to have the, the standard uh, stock looking uh, mega boss. I think he's really cool. Let's take one at a time here. This guy, um, I gave a sword from the Mega Boss uh, on Warcrusher kit and a dagger from that same kit. I poisoned his dagger, so to speak, mixed some Beel Tan Green with uh, Nurgle's uh, rod. That gives this very nice uh, toxic poison, whatever you want to call it, uh, which makes him extra sneaky, stabby looking. Smeared some blood on his armor and uh, gave him an alternate head from the, the regular kit. Uh, I took the uh, the jaw piece here. Perhaps you can. Oh, that's a bit dark. Sorry. Uh, the jaw piece from the Mega Boss and Crusher, and then I flipped it upside down so he would get an upper jaw on his uh, his jaw piece. I think that's look that looks really cool and makes him look like he's almost inside a hood. It makes him look a bit uh, one with 40k Terminator armor-ish. I think that looks cool. Then I gave him the boss pole, from, uh, also from the Mega Boss kit. And um, yeah, I think I think that's where he's unique. Um, pretty happy with the paint job. I think he looks uh, very menacing and evil. I like the gritty uh, skin tone. He looks very sickly and like you don't get too much sunlight. I don't know, do orcs get darker or lighter if they're in the sun? <laughs> Food for thought. Um, this guy is a complete conversion I did on uh, the Mega Boss uh, called Gordrak, the Fist of Gorf, the big boss of the orcs. Um, I liked him on the, the Mork Crusher, but he's a bit expensive in points for a thousand point battle or a 500 point battle or whatever you want to play that's smaller than 1500. Um, so I wanted to get him on foot. And I wasn't really happy with the pose uh, he had on the more crush and just put him on the ground and magnetize him so we can take him on or off. I would rather just get an entirely separate model. So I got a Mega Boss on foot. I cut him out off at the waist. And then I put um, did the same with the the Mega Boss and Crush. And then I just swapped the pieces around and uh, fixed the, the gap with green stuff. <coughs> Pardon? And then I wrap these chains around the cast on the Maw Crusher. Let me just get it out here for you. On the Maw Crusher, he is chained to his mount. So I thought that was a nice way of representing where those chains went. Also, I very deliberately have put, uh, have made the, the beard uh, that's from his, hanging from his necklace orange as a Fire Slayer beard because it's a very nice contrasting color to the purple. It really uh, makes the focal point, it makes him very uh, visible on the battlefield, despite his impressive size. So uh, I put in some extra armor bits here. That's actually a bracer from some other orc piece. I'm not entirely, entirely sure where that's from, but I just felt like it missed, uh, was missing some armor there. Yeah, so... I think that's it about this guy. I'm really happy with how he turned out, um, especially the the eye. I don't know if I can get it to focus. I don't know if you can see that, but if you can't, you can definitely uh, check out my Instagram. I have a very nice uh, close-up of his face there. Yeah. So that's it for this guy. And here we have him on More Crusher. 
This is my largest project. Uh, that is a miniature. Not uh, my dwarven character took uh, took longer than this, but um, but this is definitely the, the longest time I've ever taken to paint a miniature. I took my sweet time with this, especially the maw crusher. I wanted uh, that to be perfect. And I didn't want to dry brush this guy. You can paint this really fast by just dry brushing it. Like the Seraphon armies, these are very easy to paint because they have scales. They take a dry brush very well. But I actually wanted to try and individually highlight, edge highlight every scale um, and slightly bring up the color tone each time. And that took a long time. I took uh, I used about 12 hours on the, the scales alone uh, and I started with the head and worked my way backwards and I just loved how that made uh, the miniature pop but by the time I got to the hind legs I was really hating that I had chosen this technique because 12 hours in you're just kind of wanting, wanting to get done but retrospect I'm really happy I did it because I think Especially on camera, actually, this makes the miniature very uh, pop, very nice. All these uh, edge highlights, they they, they catch the, the the light very nice, which in turn actually makes um, all these little uh, bone protrusions uh, pop a bit as well. And um, it's really nice uh, contrast to the purple, I think, and it makes it a really nice centerpiece. I did some. Uh, some slight effect uh, with some uh, skull basing down here from some Tomb King's thingamajig and I did some uh, orc uh, sigil uh, bit thing over here in a puddle of green stuff just to make it uh, to raise this little edge a bit and uh, bring in a nice little hill so it wasn't an entirely flat surface this is a quite flat base I actually uh, would have liked to put him on uh, some cork or uh, some rocks or something to make it look like um, he's uh, climbing a rocky... Uh, uh, what's it called? Some rocky outcroppings. But um, I actually uh, heard from some of my more experienced player friends that uh, that would just make him easier to snipe with, uh, with artillery and ranged units, so I decided against that. I just decided to cheese it a bit and try and make it as flat as possible. <laughs> I don't want to lose this guy early. He is a bit of a glass cannon, actually. He, he can really wreck some face, but um, yeah. Is that the hardiest of guys? Which is a bit sad, because yeah, he did he did get a point reduction in, in Warhammer Age of Sigma 2.0. Still, he's not uh, always the best option to take. So that was it, ladies and gentlemen, for this uh, showcase of everything I've painted so far. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider leaving it a thumbs up and subscribe, as it helps me and my channel out a great deal. And I really appreciate it a lot. Uh, and I want to just uh, quickly a uh, shout out to all my lovely subscribers who have uh, been so kind to comment on my videos and uh, suggest what I might do next. Um, so thank you for that, and this is uh, for you guys. Um, yeah, if you want to check out something uh, uh, different I've made, you should definitely check out the showcase of my Dwarven Karak, it's a Dwarven Stronghold. And also you should remember, in the immortal words of Bruce Lee, a goal is not always meant to be reached, sometimes it simply uh, uh, serves as uh, something to aim at. So think about it, and see you in my next video.